Well, in the news at eight, uh, following this uh, developing story and uh, breaking news, former National Assembly Speaker Nosivua Mapisa Ngakula is now on her way to the Commercial Crimes Court in Pretoria. Now, the former Speaker earlier arrived at the Littleton Police Station in Centurion. It's reported that she handed herself over to law enforcement officials. Mapisa Ngakula resigned yesterday as National Assembly Speaker and Member of Parliament. In her resignation letter, she said that the resignation was not an admission of guilt regarding the corruption allegations against her. Now, the High Court in Pretoria recently struck off the role her urgent application to interdict police from arresting her. Last month, the National Prosecuting Authority raided uh, the former Speaker's home in Johannesburg. So let's bring you up to speed with the latest developments uh, starting at the Littleton Police Station in Centurion where we are joined by SABC News reporter Samkele Maseko. Uh, Samkele and we have uh, Kenny Mapanga as well outside the Commercial Crimes Court in Pretoria. Uh, let's start with you Samkele and then take it to Kenny who's at the court. Sakina. The former Speaker of Parliament, uh, Mapisa Ngakula, has effectively handed herself over here at the Littleton Police Station. She did leave this police station about 15 minutes ago. And we can also confirm that the former Deputy President of South Africa and the former Speaker of Parliament, Balega Mbete, was here at the Littleton Police Station to show, to show support and solidarity with Nosivue Mapisa Ngakula. Their relationship spans decades of friendship and comradeship within the African National Congress as well and also within the structures of the ANC Women's League. So effectively, Balagambete was here as South Africa's former Deputy President and former Speaker of Parliament and comrade of Nosi Viewer Mapisa Ngakula to show support and solidarity to her. It did not take long for Nosi Viewer Mapisa Ngakula to be processed here at this Littleton Police Station. She then effectively, after 10 15 minutes being inside this police station, was then transported to Pretoria, where she will appear at the Pretoria Magistrates Court at the Specialized Commercial Crimes Court facing those 12 counts of fraud, corruption, money laundering and racketeering amounting to those over 4 million rands of gratifications or slash bribes that she had received from one of the contractors in the Department of Defense when she was the minister. Well, thanks so much, uh, Sam Maseko. That's at the Littleton uh, Police Station in Centurion. And from there, as Sam had indicated, uh, that uh, particular action now moves to the Commercial Crimes Court, uh, which is, of course, a specialized court where Kenny Mapanga is. Kenny, good morning. So uh, we are, of course, expecting that convoy to arrive there at any time. But talk to us about what to expect and also the charges that uh, Mapisa Ngakula would be facing. Sam made mention of uh, some of those charges but of course how all of this came to be uh, where the information came from and what is the former speaker alleged to have done Well, good morning to you, Sakina, and to the viewers at home. Not much activity here outside the Pretoria Specialized Commercial Crimes Court, where we are actually waiting for the former Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosi Vyema Pisa Ngakula, to make her way here. Ideally, I'll ask my colleague, Mr. Kwasi Mansi, to just give you a visual of the court. Ideally, what she should be doing is arriving through this entrance to the court, where the court is nestled inside the building. Now, the Commercial Crimes Court enjoys the same status as a regional court. So it is essentially a lower court that deals with crimes of this nature. Now what you can expect this morning is the following, Sakina. Now that she has been processed from the Littleton Police Station, ideally the IO who would have the docket will transport the former speaker to this court. Once the docket does arrive here at this court, it'll then be enrolled by the NPA. Once it is enrolled, she would then have to make that first court appearance in one of the courtrooms nestled here in the Commercial Crimes Court. Now, Sakina, she is facing a Schedule 5 offence. This deals with corruption, allegations of corruption during her tenure as Minister of Defence. We understand that the 
MPA is relying on the Section 204 statement of a defense contractor, which allegedly implicated her in corruption. We know that that defense contractor is facing a case of her own, but alleges in the Section 204 statement that she allegedly gave bribes to the Minister of Defense in the form of cash or gifts, etc. That will be ventilated in the trial. But essentially what you can expect this morning is that, remember, once you are processed at the police station, they have about 48 hours to bring you before court. Now we know she's on her way to the commercialized crimes court. What happens then is that because this is a Schedule 5 offense, the onus rests on the accused to demonstrate to the court why it is in the interest of justice for them to be released on bail. So essentially, it is all up to her to present that case. It's neither here nor there whether the NPA is opposing or for the bail. Of course, it does assist that the NPA is opposing, but because of the nature of the serious offences that she is facing in this corruption matter, she then has to demonstrate to the court why it is in the, just, the interest rather of justice for her to be released on bail. Now, there are several grounds on which you can look at in order to see if an accused should be granted bail or not. Remember, at this stage, we're not dealing with the main merits of this case. What the court is now looking at is various grounds on whether to release her on bail. Now, when she presents that case, there's several factors you'll have to look at. Is she a flight risk? This means does she have ties to South Africa or could she easily leave the country if she were to be released on bail? Another factor they'll look at is whether she could intimidate or interfere with witnesses in this corruption probe. So essentially they'll look at the nature of the case and whether she has influence to disrupt any of that. They'll also look at if it's possible that it could undermine the administration of justice if she's released on a bail. Another issue they'll look at is whether she will evade trial or she'll be able to come and proceed with her matter and see it to its end if she's released on bail. Another big factor to look at if it's in the interest of justice is if her release on bail will be uh, disturbing public peace or public order. So that if she's released on bail, will she be a risk to other people in society if she is released on bail? So these are some of the critical factors that they'll be looking at when that bail application does kick off. We we haven't seen any activity here at the court. Ideally, as I stated earlier, she should be arriving through this public entrance behind me to go into the court to be processed so that this matter can be enrolled. We understand from her court application that she wouldn't want to stay in custody. So we can expect that if the matter is enrolled, we would hear a bail application from her lawyers uh, to the court this morning. We still need to request that permission for the media to be allowed and make that application in order for us to see if we'll be able to capture those proceedings lives. But as a wrap, that is what you can expect when she does arrive here at the Commercial Crimes Court. Over to you, Sakina. Well, Kenny, thanks. But just a quick one. Uh, has the NPA indicated whether they intend to oppose bail or not? Well, during the uh, urgent application, it was quite clear from the NPA that they don't intend uh, to oppose a bail application. But as I stated earlier, Sakina, it is really neither here nor there because of the Schedule 5 offences that she is facing in this matter. The onus rests on her to still present a case to the court on whether the interests of justice permit her release on bail. Kenny Mapanga, thanks so much. Our reporter at the Pretoria Specialised Commercial Crimes Court where the former speaker is expected to arrive any time now. And of course, uh, we will uh, keep our eyes there and let you know as soon as there are any further developments.